Welcome back to another video, guys. Long time no see. Grandpa LNP. We're gonna show them the new Ford. Dude, that's pretty nice. What year is that? 1997. It is? Yep. Other than a couple paint chips, it doesn't have any rust on it. That's a pretty truck, isn't it? Oh, yeah. You remember that black one that Dale had, that old 1994? Yeah. With the big old gas engine in it, the race engine? Yeah. Same truck, but in a diesel. Thing is huge, isn't it? Somebody's gonna win this truck, too. Pretty clean though, isn't it? Oh yeah, it looks nice. It's got the Fox shocks on it. It starts up like a new truck too. What engine did it got in it? Uh, seven three Power Stroke. I ain't heard a Ford for a while. Yeah, I mean, like. it sounds good. Let me start it out. He's used to Cummins engines, not Power Strokes. Super clean inside too. Yeah, those are the ones that came on it when it was new. That's something you'd want to probably sell or something. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of guys that want those. This is an old work truck, so it's got a vinyl floor in it. Have you seen this trailer? It's one of my trailers. Oh it is? Yeah. I just got it not long ago. And it's got these ramps that pull out right here. And you literally just pull those pins and then these car ramps pull out and you can just hook them on that lip right here yeah. so that they can't slide out when you drive up. Oh, okay. It's pretty slick. The guy that wants a Ford. Do you oh, know? yeah. This would be a nice truck for him. You heard it from him. If you want a Ford, this is a nice truck for you because we're giving this truck away. Where did you get this truck? Out of 10 place. minutes from here. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh. And the guy watched the videos. He's watching this video, yeah. Talking about how I was looking for a Ford like this and I was trying to find one. They're so hard to find. Well, one pops up for sale on my phone and it said 10 minutes from you. So I drove over and checked it out and bought it right there as soon as it went for yeah. sale. Yeah, and he already had a whole bunch of people wanting it and it was only for sale for about an hour and there was just people. Oh, really? Up. Oh, yeah. People uh. really want these trucks. They're hard to find because they? they run really good and they're super reliable and there's no like computers and crazy stuff on them other than the basic computer I think they but put too much stuff on trucks and cars anymore yeah degree to be a mechanic on an engine and yeah stuff like that it's not as simple as it used to be like something like this is very simple just like the old dodge trucks very simple yeah. you got a starter your engine your fuel tank your brakes and that's yeah. <laughs> just the basics you know nothing crazy well that's a nice truck Thank you. I think Grandpa LNP really liked the truck. He was super amused by it. He thought it was the coolest thing. He's like, man, you sure have had a lot of nice trucks. Yeah, and we gave them all away. Here we go, here we go. This truck is just about the right height to where you have to swing your leg up and get in. It's like almost straining, but not quite. And it's just enough to where like you don't really have to yank on the wheel or yank on the door to get in. And this thing starts up so fast. I've never had a 7.3 startup that nice, but it's pretty awesome. I haven't mentioned this yet, but the actual giveaway date for this truck starts on August 3rd. And then you guys will be able to enter to win the 7.3 Power Stroke. And I'm really torn on what to do. I took some votes on Instagram and I was asking old school stance or new school. Basically I had a set of like old bullet hole style wheels that were like super wide. Not quite as wide as these, but almost. They just had boggers on them. And then it was either those or basically the the set that's on it and it is so tied like it is so 50 50 everybody's like new school old school new school old school like in terms of stance and width and stuff but i do need to know for sure because i want to know if i have to order a super wide set of old school wheels and tires or if we're going to keep these on there let me tell you what we're going to be doing today i had a couple of ideas one of which kind of fell through but also i didn't tell you guys the other day i was trying to get this on video but i ended up cutting it out of yesterday's video. I did have to move a bunch of hay around and store it in the barn, and uh, it was fun. It was a good old time. I always enjoy doing that once in a while. So we're gonna be actually taking the tractor though today, and I'm so torn on what to do. I'm probably going to have to take these forks off because these are specifically for a bale spear, 
to haul the big squares around. But what I wanna do is put the forks on it, the just like the pallet forks. And I know this doesn't really have a lot to do with uh, trucks, but anyway, so we're gonna be clearing out a spot that I'm gonna be putting a food plot in for my deer hunting stuff. We do wanna for sure get the tractor started up, get it back there and see if we can't uh, start cutting some trees out of the way and at least getting them moved with that so we can get this food plot area all opened up. Man, I always think I'm gonna get out here like earlier in the day and then by time like I'm getting out the door at eight and then I get over here and then I'm like working on this and get the tractor ready, get the forks out, get the saw stuff rounded up. It's, it's already like 10 a.m. but um, this is what I'm gonna be trying to do. So if you notice here, everything here is log, but this is one of our best spots to hunt in deer season. And pretty much, it doesn't matter what time of year it is, from September, well all through the summer, but I'm talking about seasons right now, through mid-September until pretty much mid-November, this field is on fire. Like the deer love it because it's hidden, it's brushy through that whole tree line, you can't see through it. And even in the winter months, there's so much brush, it's so hard to pick stuff out through that tree line because it's so thick with sticks and brush and crap. This field is just awesome. We've got standing corn in the back corner right over there. That crop is staying, it was planted specifically for deer. And then this whole field is orchard grass, alfalfa, and clover, and just a bunch of other stuff. Really good spot as it is. However, every stinking year, the most buck activity that I see is not in this backfield. Most of the time it's young bucks and does in this field, but what I usually see a lot of is the more mature deer tend to hang out just inside the woods over here, just like passing through scanning the field, like scent checking it when the wind's right. It's great because if we have a south wind, a wind coming out of the south, they can scent check the field and they usually walk through this back strip of woods about 50 yards in off the field, just scent checking. But my stand location is even further down south, about 40-ish yards from uh, where we typically see them the closest they get to the field. So usually my stand is back behind So I'm on the far back side So when there's deer in this field and the mature bucks are usually coming through on this side because they want to scent check the field before they enter If they enter I'm usually tucked back in just a little bit more so that way I'm downwind of where they're at and uh, You know obviously they don't the bucks don't scent check me and then there's not much of their woods behind it So it kind of works out to where it's kind of hard for them to get around me in this spot But the issue is we never really had any great reason for them to slow down back here Because it was always just thick and brushy and they would just kind of cut through and keep moving They never really stopped to browse much But anyway, so what we're gonna try to do with the tractor is I'm gonna limb some of this stuff off here So that we can open this up and I want to have like an open shooting lane and food plot that kind of gets tucked back into here. And it's gonna be kind of an odd shape back in here, but it's gonna be super productive in the deer season. So we're gonna get rid of this tree, cut this out, take the forks, move these big pieces of oak and like set them in a pile out of the way by the other brush where the deer don't travel. And then what we're gonna do is come back in here a little bit more. And I'm probably just gonna take the plot like straight through here. And then if you follow me back here, I'll show you why I wanna take it straight back. This is where I'm wanting to be set up. So we've got plenty of tree stand tree options, lots of nice tall straight trees, lots of great spots to get a stand up in. I'm thinking about that sycamore right back there where all this massive pile of brushes. And the reason for that is I can loop back around through the back side of the property and sneak in and not bust anything off this field or if there's anything in the small plot, which is gonna be more of a staging area than like a big feeding location. I can get up in there in that big pile of brush here. will mostly cover my activity getting up in and out of that tree. And it puts me within about 20 yards of the closest edge of this plot, which is gonna be this whole big open area here. And down over there, you can't really see it, but where all that sunlight is, it's wide open. And so I'm gonna put a little food right there too. And that stand is within 30 yards of that location right down there. The deer are gonna mostly follow this path through here, which they historically always have, and cut through the back here, just about, I don't know, we're probably 40 yards off the field. And I'm telling you what, last year, I saw, probably had 10 different bucks come through this one location, and one morning, I had an experience with, it was either four or five younger bucks cut through this spot, basically just scent checking for does and just kind of passing through here. So it's just a really good location, but we're finally, at a point now to where we can clear this out and actually put some food in here to kind of slow them down, uh, but then also give us some shots because we just 
it was just so thick before and it's thick now but it was just so thick with brush and briars and it was just a mess like you weren't getting shots unfortunately you were just not getting shots through here and your arrows were getting deflected on almost any shot you would take unless they were super close and your arrow didn't have to jump that much one and a half hour update here's where we're at trees cut up all the pieces are dropped over there with the forks and now I'm just kind of like cutting, pushing, cutting, pushing, trying to get back to that open spot back there where it'll be a little bit easier to clean up because I don't have to do as much cutting and pushing, you know, because it's mostly already open. So uh, there's a mound right here I got to push out of the way. We're going to get that moved. Then there's a bunch of logs over there I cut all up that are ready to get pushed as well. And hopefully we can get on back to that spot. And then uh, I'll probably just pick the camera back up once we're done just because um, you know, it's just kind of pushing dirt. Well, here's where we got all this cleared out. Not, uh, not done, but it's a pretty good dent in the project. And I've got obviously a path going all the way out to the front. But let me pull forward here. Let me show you what we still got to do. We've got all of this to do yet. I'm probably gonna have a bulldozer in here to get that all done just because it'll be way faster and there's just a lot of down stuff and a lot of small sections of uh, tree roots from all the small trees. So we're gonna get all this cleared out. And also, all of that even further, about another 20 yards down past that ending spot. See where I was just pointing there? I also got this path going straight out to the field. Gotta get us a nice tree. I can't trip down. Sorry about my French here. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> hey, yeah, you know what? You can just cut it out. So we're actually on our way to go pick up her truck. So if you're subscribed to her, you probably saw the reveal yesterday. If you're not subscribed to her, what are they doing? <laughs> Links in the description if you want to subscribe to her channel and also top link in the description if you would like to enter to win her Duramax. Um, but we're on our way to go pick that up right now. Like I said, it was going to be done today in my video. I didn't know if I was going to get it on video or not, but it is done and we're on our way to go pick it up. Here it is. Mm -mm. No more rust. Here's the carnage from the bed fenders. It was pretty bad. It looks worse now that he cut it out. Like you can see like just how bad it was. All chopped out. This is actually the one from the driver's side. So, well, my bad passenger side. So you can see like, this is where that would have been right here. This was the passenger side. This is from the driver's side. What do you think about that? Was it as bad as you thought? No, oh, I knew it was bad. I was just saying like when I took them off and you saw that on the truck, was it as bad as you thought it was gonna be or was it not as bad as you thought it was gonna be? Or? Makes me mad. You can see the rocker panels. I'll show you those. Rockers look really, really good. And what he also did, just so you guys are aware, because some people are gonna go, oh, the texture looks off. He put like a rock guard protection and then he painted it. So he replaced the rocker. Then he put like this rock guard. It's like a rubberized rock guard material over top of the metal and then he painted it over with the factory color but it's supposed to help um, with rocks and rust and stuff like that mostly rocks that they don't chip away at the paint so bad since it's got kind of like a rubberized finish to it rocker panel here is obviously he replaced the entire rocker panel looks really good so much better and then same thing on the other side. That is gonna put an end to this one. If you guys enjoyed it, hit the thumbs up, comment down below, subscribe if you're new. Do not forget that if you wanna to enter to win this truck, it ends tomorrow. Tomorrow is your last day to enter, and then this one is gone. Link in the description, it's dieselbabegear.com, her website, and every $5 is 10 entries to win. And this truck could be yours. I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.